Good afternoon, it's Mayor Turner. I was just wanting to get you caught up today um, on May 5th. Uh, we'll run through the numbers again, then we've got some exciting news uh, for many. Um, Amarillo has continued to climb to 1,172, so please keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Lubbock is at 560. Uh, Abilene is still climbing up to 356. San Angelo is at 56. Wichita Falls is 68. Our friends in Midland have climbed to 90, so let's keep them in our prayers. El Paso is at 1,029. Uh, Odessa at this time has 85 confirmed cases. Um, the drive-through testing has done 39 testing, 39 tests. Uh, so far, they only have one positive, which is great. Uh, we still remain at four for the deaths, uh, but we have 59 that are recovered, which is fantastic. Um, because, you know, with 85 illnesses, 59 recovered, there's 26 difference there, so that's fantastic. We have 26 active cases right now. Uh, Medical Center uh, has four in their house. Uh, they have none under investigation, and they have 14 pending tests. Uh, ORMC has zero confirmed, zero under um, investigation, and they have five uh, pending tests. Uh, talked a little bit yesterday about um, the tickets that have gone out, so people wanted to know, well, how many? Well, we have ticketed 10 people through this whole process. Um, so couple of the gyms uh, had stayed stayed open when they shouldn't have one of them opened when they shouldn't have and so those were ticketed uh, but there have been some other businesses somebody asked me yesterday they said okay well if you're in a business that's not supposed to be open can you get a ticket as a customer and the answer is yes um, the officers will first and foremost give everybody a warning uh, because we feel like that's the best way to do is work with people to correct the problem. If the problem keeps going, then we have to go ahead and issue tickets. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about um, the federal government has been putting together packages. Uh, you've heard them talking about it on the news. There is a program called CDBG, which is Community Development Block Grant Money. And over the last 10 years, that money has slowly been dwindling down. But through the first round of allocations to the cities, the city of Odessa was awarded 514,553 in CDBG funds. Um, the cities use funds. You'll have a general fund, you'll have a water fund, you'll have a... Uh, sewer fund and that's just the way that um, governor I mean uh, the uh, cities do business let me tell you what that money is really about with CDBG that money goes to middle to low income uh, it can be helped used for rent and utility payments uh, meals on wheels um, they had 50 new not 58 new cases where people need meals on wheels, well, we can use that money for that. Um, Family Promise is a fantastic organization. It's put together by the churches, and when people are homeless with kids, they test them, make sure they're drug-free, things like that, and then they let them get a job, and they live in the churches uh, for a week. Then they move to another church. They live at that church. That church feeds them, takes care of them. It's a great organization. So there may be some additional fund that's going to uh, Family Promise. Other things that can be used for are broadband internet in low income areas, um, COVID testing for nursing homes, things like that. It's mainly for low income, low to moderate income. Uh, there are a lot of really good things that they do with the CDBG money but that money has been allocated there. We have asked the city manager uh, and uh, Marita, who is in charge of this program, to bring back some uh, recommendations. Uh, I know a lot of people need rent help, uh, things like that, and that's what we're gonna be looking at here in the next few weeks. That money can't be used anywhere else 
but in those in that fund. So like we talked about, you know, that's the way gov city government does their business. Um, talk a little bit about some testing that city council approved today. One of the problems, you know, we've all seen the models that came out early, University of Texas model, um, models from Harvard, models from everywhere, saying that there were gonna be so many thousand dead, so many thousand sick, sick. And the problem is those are moving targets. They're estimates, they're guesses. We haven't had a lot with concrete facts. And one of the things we are gonna do, we have a group that touches more of the citizens probably than anybody else. And that's our police, our fire, our sheriff, our first responders. There is an antibody test that we can give to each one of them. Uh, so this will be done in the county, be done in the city, and uh, in coordination with Texas Tech, the health department. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an antibody test on all of our first responders throughout Ector County. Now you're saying, why do this? Well, if somebody has been in contact with COVID-19, they may not have caught it, but their body will have antibodies in there that say, that have show that they have been in contact with COVID-19. So this will give us a good idea of what's going on in Hector County from a scientific standpoint, not necessarily somebody's or somebody's best guess. And this is a great uh, way to do it. Paramedics are gonna start drawing blood. It is a blood test. It's not like the swab. And they will draw that. They'll be send it off to the lab. We are getting the test at cost to be able to help the first responders, but this will really give us an idea of what's going on so we can better make decisions for the city. Uh, our first responders uh, are heroes. They're the first one to run into when things get bad. And this is a perfect chance to be able to use their experiences to see where we are with COVID. Now, some people will say, well, why don't you give them the nose test? Part of the problem with the nose test is say you go in and you get one of the swabs and they come back and say, well, you don't have COVID. Well, that is just for that one time when they checked it. You could get COVID the next day. Maybe your symptoms weren't bad enough. Maybe it hadn't been long enough since you were exposed. But the very next day you could take a test and you might be positive. And that's one of the problems with those tests. Uh, it is just a snip at a time. And so that's why we're going with the antibody. Even if the, they aren't developing the virus, it can say you've been exposed. So if we get a large number of our first responders coming back saying, they were exposed, then we know maybe coronavirus is a little worse than we thought here in Hector County or in Odessa. And this is a great opportunity to do it from a scientific basis. And some people have asked that, hey, what would you, what would it take for you to start closing down the city? Again, the only thing where I would even consider it is if the hospitals are full and the hospitals start calling and saying, we can't handle anymore. That's the only way I see us going back. Uh, people in Hector County have done a very, very good job of social distancing, and we're just not seeing numbers that those early studies said we would, which is fantastic, and I'm very proud of our community. We could do better wearing masks, so think about that. We strongly recommend you wear masks, but I want to get to the good news. Um, the whole thing, the funniest part about it is in this, the thing I get to hear most is ladies telling me we need to get our nails done. I hear it from my daughters. I hear it from her friends. I hear it from all the ladies on Facebook that say, we need to get this done. Well, I listened to the um, press conference from the governor. As of Friday, all of the barber shops, the beauty shops, the nail salons, the tanning salons can be open again. So 
uh, that is great news. Uh, tell anybody you know, hey, you can open up on Friday. Now, let me say, there are going to be some rules. Um, it's called the Best Policy Manual. You can get it on the state's website uh, for coronavirus. It will tell you kind of what they want you to do. Uh, say, a hair salon, both people need to be wearing masks, doing the hair, and the person that... Uh, uh, is receiving the service and right now he did not say anything about tattoo parlors I just saw that come through I would guess it would probably be the 18th is when they're gonna do uh, the uh, tattoo studios but those will be open uh, he did also talk about gyms uh, the gyms are going to be open back up on the 18th uh, they are finishing the steps that they want to be able to protect people in gyms. For example, um, the showers and the locker rooms will be closed. So you will not have the opportunity to shower there. You will not have the opportunity maybe to change your clothes. So um, those are gonna be some things. Also, if you lift weights, you have to have gloves that go all the way to the tips of your fingers. I know my workout gloves are just partial gloves but that is something they're gonna require. Uh, all the equipment will have to be cleaned after each time you use it. That's no problem. Uh, people will be happy to do that just to get back in the gyms. So I was excited about that and I just wanted to let you know, um, on my Facebook, you're going to see two posts. Uh, these are um, done by our, per, our PIO, which is the person that takes care of all the media for the city, she does an amazing job. She is going to put on there talking about hair salons and things like that, the steps that need to be done. But please go ahead and get that information from the state. No, you go on to the, uh, you can go on to anybody's web page from the state. Go to coronavirus; it'll have all that information. So um, he also. Uh, Governor Abbott updated the or eased the restrictions for funerals, memorials, and weddings. I did not get to listen to that part because I was getting ready to get on here with you. I will review that and kind of give you an idea of what it is tomorrow. I know I'm getting a lot of people asking, you know, we have a quinceanera, uh, somebody wants to get married, things like that. And so hopefully I'll be able to have some of that information for you tomorrow. Um, talk a little bit about the testing center uh, we talked a little bit about some of the ease the CDC eased some of the restrictions I've got the right phone number uh, well, there was a mix-up earlier you will have a post on my Facebook page that you can go to and it will tell you the phone number tell you what you need to do and everything but I want to give you the phone number just in case you need it uh, it's 432 seven zero three five four eight one you call that number you tell them you want to get tested they'll set you an appointment to go out to the Coliseum and get that get tested they have plenty of times uh, it's not as quite as busy as they wanted there are some still time slots that are open but you can go do that uh, the number is four three two seven zero three five four eight one so the governor basically talked a little bit about the increase in testing that is being done. And one thing they have done is early in this, they were just testing the very sickest, which made it look like, you know, maybe 30% of the people that were tested, tested positive for coronavirus. Well, now they're testing a lot broader, um, group of people you know like if you just want to go out there and get tested you can go out there and get tested well now they've got that down to about five percent of the people that go through a coronavirus test are positive so it's only five percent it's five out of 20 or sorry it's five out of a hundred which is fantastic uh, so the numbers are going down um, I'm gonna go back and watch it just a little bit more but it's looking good, uh, especially in West Texas. 
we do have our hot spots such as Amarillo, uh, such as Abilene, but things are looking good. But this is not the time to relax. We need to make sure you're social distancing, you're carrying your hand sanitizer, that you're wearing a mask. It's gonna be cooler the next few days, so you can wear a mask. It's not quite as hot as it was yesterday. But y'all are doing a fantastic job. Keep up the great works. We're still talking about, um, I saw something talking about parks. Right now, all the parks are open except the equipment. Uh, we want you walking on the tracks. You can play basketball, you can play volleyball, you can do all of that kind of stuff. But the equipment itself is a problem. Um, if a child slides down that has coronavirus, it's no longer safe for the next kid. And so that's why we're kind of holding off on that just a little bit longer. Council also had a discussion talking about the pools. It's not the pool's problem. It's the social distancing while you're at the pool is uh, what the doctors are telling us. And until we have a really good grasp on where we are as a community and things moving forward, it's really going to be difficult to open the pools. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, so we talked briefly about if things get a lot better, we might be able to open the splash pool, uh, UTBB, and some of those things. But um, that's where we're at today. I knew there were going to be a lot of happy people out there because this stuff's getting a little long and it looks like I'm going to have a mullet if I don't go get a haircut. So um, I guess you would call it a skullet since I don't have enough hair everywhere else. So anyway, um, I just want to tell you thank you. You are my heroes. God bless each and every one of you. God bless Odessa. God bless Texas. And God bless the United States of America. And I will see all of you tomorrow, my friends. Thank you.